Are you considering starting a tutorial business or already a host? If so, you're in for a wild ride. In this video, I'm diving into the gritty realities of running a Toro business. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned host, you want to stick around as I uncover the five things I hate about running a Toro business. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. So when first getting started in Totoro, they have a huge lack of education and resources that they give newbie hosts uh, getting into the car rental game. All they do is onboard you with a cleaning certification video to make sure you're disinfecting cars correctly. But other than that, they give you no education or any resources on how to successfully be a Toro host. So when I got into Toro, I had to heavily rely on YouTube for education on how to be a Toro host on the platform and not get banned off the platform and uh, sustain good reviews. Having the education on running a Toro business is essential if you wanna be successful in the car rental space. If you just jump onto the platform and don't treat it like an actual business, you easily can get banned off the platform and lose tons of money. So the second thing I absolutely hate about Toro is Toro's fees. Toro is notorious for double dipping on the host end and the customer end. As a seasoned Toro host, I know and every other Toro host knows that Toro, they take the young driver fees. They take a percentage of all the earnings you make, any type of extras. If you get a gas reimbursement, they charge a the gas extra on top of everything. Anything you make on the platform, Toro is probably making just as much as you, or if not, double. So the fees that Toro charges is insane. And that's one thing I really do not like about Toro because I oftentimes have guests that contact me saying they want to extend a booking, but they can't afford it because they're charging them over a hundred dollars extra a day when I only charge $50 a day. So whatever you make, essentially Toro is making the same amount off of your car. And overall with Toro taking all these fees, it can't eat into business profits. So that's why essentially a lot of posts on Toro eventually get into private rentals and doing things themselves so they can essentially make more money uh, with their business instead of giving Toro a large cut out of their profits. The third thing that I absolutely hate about Toro is the inability to step away from your business. If you wanna go on a vacation, you've been working super hard, you, you wanna finally step away and enjoy yourself, it is super duper hard to get away from the business. Toro is a business that requires undivided attention and 24 seven support in it because guests always have questions. They always need to get in and out of vehicles and vehicles are always going out and coming in. So if you do wanna step away from the business, uh, you will have to possibly lose out on money or hire somebody else to run the business while you're away. And that can be hard to do. These days, a lot of people aren't reliable when it comes to hiring employees. I've heard numerous stories about people having troubles hiring in this industry. That's, in my opinion, the number one thing I really do not like about Toro. But on the upside, in every business, you will have to deal with something like this. So in the comments, you know, don't, don't bash me, but in every business, you will have to deal with having to step away if you wanna go on vacation. But when it comes to the car on the game, it is a little harder because you're talking about something that is on wheels that has to get driven back and forth and that can have maintenance issues and reliability issues sometimes um, unexpectedly. So that's one of the downsides of running a Toro business. The fourth thing I absolutely hate about running a car rental business in 2024 is the fact that insurance rates are extremely expensive. Within the last couple of years, insurance rates have skyrocketed nationally, causing the rates of insurance to go up for everybody and, and essentially affecting car rental uh, business owners the most. You know, if you're paying an extra $200 a month for, just for insurance on vehicles that you're essentially not really using because Toro has their own insurance, that can easily eat into vehicle profits and business profits. So that's one of the things that I really do not like about the car rental game is that insurance rates are extremely, extremely expensive. And one way to avoid uh, paying so much for insurance, and this is something that I do myself, um, but this is not financial advice, but what I do is I get liability insurance on all my vehicles because essentially you're not really driving the vehicle outside of Toro. What you can do is just get liability to meet the state standards of having that insurance. And then um, when it's on Toro, it'll be fully covered under Toro's insurance policy. So this will save you possibly hundreds of dollars a month. I know it saves me a couple hundred, especially with me being young. So this is something that you definitely can do to save, save some money on insurance and uh, essentially make you more money, making you more profitable. Now the fifth and final thing I absolutely hate about Toro in the car rental game is that it's literally a race to the bottom when it comes to pricing. There's hosts on Toro that literally have 2023 20, vehicles that put them on the platform for $40 a day. 
And I think to myself, like, how do these people afford to put their, these cars on here for so cheap? Because I know their payments are a couple hundred dollars a month at, at least. Some people are literally just putting their cars on here just to cover their payments, um, lowering the value of other cars on the platform. So now it forces other hosts to compete with these prices, lowering their prices. And at the, essentially, it's literally a race to the bottom. So some markets as of 2024 are literally, in my opinion, not even worth trying to start Toro. So if you're thinking about getting into Toro, uh, definitely do market research and see if it's even worth it. Um, I definitely do not believe any 2023 model vehicle should be going on Toro for $40 a day at that point. Um, just I wouldn't get, it, get into it, try to find another business. Like for instance, if you look in California's market, LA, they have 2020 vehicles all day going on there for $30, $40 a day. Um, it makes absolutely zero sense to me. I don't ever understand it. That's one thing I really do not like about Toro. Essentially in certain markets, it's literally a race to the bottom. A couple ways to navigate through this issue is to make your, your listings stand out on top of these other listings by um, having professional photos or taking really nice photos and taking at least 10 to 12 photos per post on your, uh, on your profile. This essentially will stand you out in front of these other vehicles that are going for less a day because once those vehicles are booked, your vehicle will be the next vehicle up to go out. Also, you can add extras to your cars, your vehicles, and you can offer discounts and things like that. I do advise Toro hosts not to lower your prices if you don't have to, because it definitely is a race to the bottom and it can put you out of business. In this video, I talked about the five things I absolutely hate about Toro. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with me on these things um, and any opinions that you have in the comment section. And if you like this video here, click on this video next.